Surgeons from around the world will be taught how to use robots during operations at a new Melbourne-based academy. Launching today, the facility will offer training similar to the way flight simulators are used for pilots. It's an Australian first and is expected to be operational by the end of next year. Dr Daniel Moon is a urologist with expertise in robotic surgery and is on the board of the new academy and he joins me now from Melbourne. Thank you for your time this afternoon. Now, robotic surgery isn't new, but is this centre evidence of robots' worth in the theatre? Thanks very much, Kirsten. I appreciate the opportunity to come on, and I'd like to start by thanking the Minister, Jill Hennessy, and the State Government for their vision in providing uh, such a generous sum of money to help set up what will be, hopefully, a game-changer for surgical training and education. Why will it be a game-changer? Well, you have to understand that um, in the last 15 years, as robotic technology has advanced and um, taken over a lot of procedures across the country, uh, the, there has been a vast need for the training of surgeons, not only surgeons now who wish to transition to robotic surgery, but also surgeons of the future who are currently undergoing training and as at the moment have no standardised or structured or evidence-based curriculum for the introduction of such skills to ensure that we're safely introducing these techniques um, for future patients. What types of surgeries are robots used most in and what is it exactly that they do? Have you seen a robotic surgical theatre, Kirsten? No. Um, I'd invite you any time to come and have a look. It really is a spectacular piece of technology. If you can imagine, we currently do keyhole surgery um, using handheld instruments um, or open surgery through a large cut. But if you can imagine a telescope that goes down one of these 10 millimetre incisions but projects three-dimensional pictures to a virtual reality type machine that when you put your head in, it's like having your head in someone's body with a magnifying glass in full 3D uh, high definition digital vision and from that machine you can remotely control instruments eight millimeters in diameter that move in all directions can be finely scaled to adjust to the movements of your hands have the tremor filtered out we can beam images into that console so that we can uh, use ultrasound and other forms of imaging to guide surgery and suddenly you can perform very complex operations in a very confined space that's otherwise very hard to reach but having said that the machine doesn't make the surgeon if you give me a formula one car i can drive it into a tree so you have to still be able to tr train surgeons how to use such machines to ensure that they're introduced safely and um, although this is the most advanced surgical platform that we have to date, um, we need appropriate teaching, training and education to work hand in hand with that. And that's the mission of this academy. And just in terms of the specialties in which the robots are used, is it increasingly broad? Absolutely. So um, it initially it was introduced and really taken up by urologists for prostate cancer, which is an operation um, that involves not only quite delicate dissection around very important structures, but also reconstruction in a quite hard to reach place at the bottom of the abdomen behind the pubic bone. Um, but having gained experience in that, uh, it became apparent that such technology is equally applicable to complex forms of kidney cancer surgery, uh, to cardiac surgery, general surgery for bowel cancers, gynaecological surgery, ENT. There's been a, a, a real uh, opportunity to operate on tumours down the throat, for example, that previously really were only accessible through very morbid techniques, breaking the jaw, or opening up the face to get to the back of the tongue. The robot changes all that. There's a lot of niche areas like that, but that's only the robots we have now. There's also a whole wave of machines that are going to come on board in the next few years, and we need an education system so that we're not playing catch-up. We need to have our surgical bodies uh, well-versed with evidence-based guidelines as to how we can safely teach people on new technology, not only of today, but of tomorrow. All right, Dr Daniel Moon, it's been terrific to talk to you this afternoon. Thank you. Thanks, Kirsten.